Thomas over there, and I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, it's my understanding the work that we've done, my staff, we have spent $300 billion since 2014 in Ukraine. Uh, does that sound about right to you? I know that's before your time. Uh, that, that does sound high to me. We, we did about $300 million a year for Ukraine for a number of years, and then just in the last two years we've done about 40. So if you're talking whole of government, it might be, I, I would have to check. But for DOD, that does sound high. Yeah. Well, my staff looked into it. About $300 billion, uh, their best guesstimate. Uh, right now we're, we're printing or borrowing $80,000 per second. 4.6 million a minute. We can't sustain that much longer. We got to find best ways to spend our money. This is my video update on this Thursday morning, April the 11th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with 300 billion spent in Ukraine since 2014. 300 billion since 2014. I would I would quadruple that. <laughs> I would quadruple that and you're probably you're probably uh, at the right amount spent on Project Ukraine since 2014. Maybe 300 billion is what you can account for with regards to spending on Project Ukraine. Since 2014, maybe 300 billion is what has been spent on Project Ukraine over the last two years. But 300 billion since. What's up, buddy? Since uh, 2014, that number is low. That number is very, very low. Anyway, General Cavoli. He was speaking to, to the House, and he warned that Russia has more ammunition than Ukraine. From the Washington Post, General warns House on Ukraine. The side that can shoot back, that can't shoot back, loses. The side that can't shoot back, loses. That is the warning from General Cavoli. Ukraine has been rationing its munitions as Congress has delayed passing its 60 billion supplemental bill. Quote, they are now being outshot by the Russian side five to one. So the Russians fire five, five times as many artillery shells at the Ukrainians and then the Ukrainians are able to fire back. That will immediately go to 10 to 1 in a matter of weeks, Cavoli said. We're not talking about months. We're not talking hypothetically, warned the general. So they make it, they make it uh, seem like on the, on the Polish-Ukrainian border, on the border with Ukraine, there are boxes and boxes of, uh, of ammo, like just boxes, one stacked on top of the other, going way up high. And they've got all this ammo there, right? Uh, thousands of boxes of ammunition. And it's just sitting there right on the border with Ukraine. And if only the Alensky regime had 61 billion to purchase that ammunition, it would all be good. But because they don't have the 61 billion, uh, we, can't, we can't give you that ammunition, guys. It's just right here. See all these boxes? We got all of this ammo. Check it out. All the ammo is right here, but uh, it's gonna cost you 61 billion. If only they had that 61 billion to, to purchase the, the ammunition. That's, that's, the pic that's the picture that they paint which is completely false. And by the way, I thought the Russians were running out of weapons and ammunition, General Cavoli. All of a sudden, they're going to outgun the, the Ukrainians 10 to 1. They're already out, out shooting them 5 to 1. I thought they were running out. 
washing machine chips and shovels and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe Cavoli was misinforming the, uh, the U.S. government, the Biden White House, over the past two years about the weapons that the Russians currently have in stock, ready to go. I don't know. I don't know. All of a sudden, the Russians are outgunning the Ukrainians. And I thought Russia was just a, just a gas station masquerading as a country. Who would have ever thought that uh, Russia is also a weapons producer masquerading as a country? They're a weapons producer masquerading as a country as well as a gas station masquerading as a country. Who would have ever seen that one coming? So yesterday we had huge Russian missile and drone strikes all across Ukraine. And these uh, missile and drone strikes, they hit Ukraine energy infrastructure. So the problem, General Cavoli, is not only with ammunition, but the problem with uh, Ukraine is that they also don't have any air defense systems or very few air defense systems, very few Patriot air defense systems. Russia pretty much hit everywhere they wanted to yesterday in Ukraine. They hit the energy infrastructure in Kharkov, in Kiev, in Odessa, in Lvov. They also went after the gas storage facilities in, uh, in the west of Ukraine in an area called Strigi, where allegedly the European Union is storing a whole bunch of gas. And the Russians are looking to take out that gas storage facility. And, uh, and the air defense was was nowhere. It could do nothing to stop the Russian missiles and the drones because air defense in Ukraine is, is dwindling. It is diminishing. And even Kuleba, the foreign minister of, uh, of Ukraine, he was so angry yesterday at what was going on that he came out with a statement and said, enough. Enough. I am tired of diplomacy. I'm tired of being uh, Mr. Nice Guy when it comes to asking the Collective West for Patriot uh, air defense systems. Kuleba said that he is now going to order, demand from the Collective West that they hand over Patriots. But Annalena 360, she did the math yesterday. She did the math. She she added up the numbers. She subtracted the numbers. Uh, she said, uh, Annalena was doing the math on a big, big whiteboard. She's, she's working out the formulas and Annalena 360 plus minus square root. Uh, this squared minus that squared square root. Da, 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 plus minus divided and Annalena came to the conclusion that Patriot air defense systems have been exhausted and you know that when Annalena 360 does the math you know that it's it's accurate but Kuleba is very angry he is now going to, to demand that the West give over Patriot systems Speaking about math, speaking about math, the, the Ukraine general staff, the armed forces, they did some math with regards to the missile strikes from yesterday, and they reported that Ukrainian defenses shot down 37 of the 40 Shahid-type drones launched by Russia overnight. 37 of 40 Shahid drones were shot down according to the Ukraine armed forces who did the math. Oh boy. So the, the Axios article, Alensky says he invited Trump to Ukraine to explain his peace proposals, according to 
Axios. Alensky on Tuesday said he invited Trump to Ukraine because he is open to hearing the former president's proposals, but he warned that he is deeply skeptical of giving up territories if the deal is that we just give up our territories and that's the idea behind it then it's very then it's a very primitive idea Alensky said in an interview according to Politico Alensky also said on Tuesday that Trump had privately expressed interest in traveling to Ukraine but had not committed to it so uh, Pelosi she called up Alensky she said Alensky it's time to invite Trump to Ukraine and to get the Alensky curse to finally do away with Trump. We've tried everything. We have tried everything to try and weaken Trump, to try and remove Trump. Nothing has worked. It's time for the Alensky curse. Alensky told Pelosi, eh, Nancy, Nancy, I try. I try. I invite this Trump. To Kiev, I tell this Trump, Mr. Trump, you come to Kiev, I sell you a couple bottles of my Alensky number five. It's very, very intoxicating. And, uh, and then, yes, when he comes to Kiev, I give him my curse. And everything is good for Mr. Biden, but he still does not come to Kiev, Nancy. What to do? What do I do? <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's what they're trying to do to remove Trump. Get some of that Alensky curse on uh, Trump. By the way, Alensky visited Kharkov the other day. That's not a good sign for Kharkov, which which is struggling with blackouts because of uh, the Russian strikes on on the energy infrastructure in uh, Kharkov. But part of the Alensky curse, it's not only the Alensky curse is not only person to person. It's also when Alensky visits uh, a city, a village, a territory. Whenever Alensky visits that area, something bad is about to go down. That's the plan. That is the plan to remove Trump. They're getting desperate. We got to get Trump to Kiev. Got to get him to Kiev. That is our only way of removing Trump. So the big story, the big story from yesterday is this, this impending, imminent Iranian attack against Israel, according to Bloomberg. There is going to be an attack from Iran on Israel in the next 48 hours. U.S. sees imminent missile strike on Israel by Iran proxies. Iran proxies may strike Israeli military government sites. Attack would mark major widening of conflict in the Middle East. Biden was, uh, was giving a press conference with the prime minister of, of Japan. And uh, Biden, when he was asked about this this imminent strike on, uh, on Israel from Iran, Biden said, and I quote, Iran is threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. But as I told Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. We will do all we can do to protect Israel's security. Once again, Biden boxing himself in. What a big mouth that Biden has. What a big mouth. He could have said a hundred other things to not box America in, even if America is going to support Israel no matter what. You don't have to state this on record to the media at a press conference with the Japanese prime minister. Just say no comment. We're, we're, in, we're, we're in talks with Israel. We're discussing the situation with Israel and our allies. And that's all I can tell you at the moment. That's the perfect response to, to a question from the media. What is the U.S. going to do if Iran uh, strikes out at Israel? 
But nope, not Biden. Not Biden. As I told Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. We will do all we can to protect Israel's security. Uh, Joe Bidenopolis. So the neocons, they, uh, they want war with Iran. They've been trying to get a war with Iran now for the past six months. They've never been closer to a war with Iran than they've ever been over these last six months. And uh, that, is, that is why the embassy in Syria, the Iranian embassy in Syria was hit because the, the goal is to get Iran to respond. And once you have this type of, of commitment from the Biden White House, which I'm sure the neocons told him to say this, they told him to go on record and commit the US to attacking Iran. If Iran retaliates against Israel, well, then the neocons, they, they get their, their war, right? So Israel hits an embassy. They deliberately send a missile into an embassy in Syria. And the problem is Iran's retaliation. And Iran has to retaliate. That's, that's a given. But, uh, but Iran is now the enemy. Iran is now at fault. Iran is now getting the warnings. Don't retaliate. You hit our embassy. And now you're warning us not to retaliate. The international rules-based order, <laughs> right? The international rules-based order. So four scenarios. I'm thinking of four scenarios here. Iran does not attack. They wait it out. They play the long game. And this 48 hours an imminent Iranian attack is... It's not real news. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is, is Iran does attack, but not with missile strikes. They attack and they retaliate. Attack is not even the correct word, retaliate. Retaliate is actually the proper word. Iran retaliates and uh, they retaliate in a, a non-military way, right? Maybe, a, maybe a, a hack or something, or I don't know, cyber, cyber attack. I don't know, but, but they, don't, they don't send missiles to I Israeli infrastructure or an Israeli embassy. I don't know, whatever. They don't attack in the way that Bloomberg is saying they're going to attack. Uh, Iran does attack. That's option number three. Iran does attack in the way that Bloomberg is saying they're going to attack with, uh, with missiles and, and they hit an Israeli building a government building or infrastructure or something i don't know and uh and option number four is a false flag this is this is a perfect false flag scenario in which case the neocons will get the collective west media to say that this was indeed an attack and a retaliation an attack by iran iran attacked X, Y, and Z, and Biden has committed the U.S. to attacking Iran. And there you have it, a war with, with Iran. The neocons get what they've wanted for, for so many decades. Let's, uh, let's talk about some other news and we'll get to today's clown world. We have reports saying that Biden is actually considering an Australian request to drop prosecution charges against Julian Assange. This is according to CNN. Asked Wednesday about Australia's call to end Assange's prosecution, Biden told reporters at the White House, we're considering it. CNN has reached out to the National Security Council for additional comment on the president's remark. So the only the only reason Biden would consider dropping the charges against Julian Assange as per Australia's request 
is because Biden is desperate to try and win back some of the the Democrat uh, young young voters who have now turned their back on on Biden because of his stance with uh, with Israel and his support of the genocide in Gaza. That is the only reason I can see Biden actually saying, OK, if if uh, dropping the charges against Assange will win me back some of the, the young voters, then then I'll do it. That's how desperate the Biden campaign has become. But that's the only reason why Biden is even considering this. And I still don't believe it. I still don't believe that Biden will find the, I was going to say courage, but it's not really courage. I don't believe he'll find the, the, the pathway to, to actually convincing the deep state and, and the neocons to, to go along with, with a, a pardon or a dropping of charges against Julian Assange. He'll tell them, look, let's drop the charges against Assange. I'm going to need this in my reelection. Come on, Mr. Deep State. Come on, Mr. Mr. Neocon globalist. Give me something. Give me something to, to help in my reelection. But I don't even think they will give him that. Anyway, we'll, we will see. Let's hope. Let's hope that uh, that Biden does find a way to convince his his masters, his handlers, that uh, that it would be a good move to pardon Assange or drop charges against Assange. Let's uh, let's do our clown world, and we will wrap up the video for today. We are sticking with Joe Biden, with Professor Biden, and during the press conference with the Japanese Prime Minister, Biden said, "Elect me." I'm in the 20th century. Let me play the, the video for you guys. Elect me. I'm in the 20, 20th century, 21st century. Not so that was Biden saying, elect me. I'm in the 20th century. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is he talking about? He course corrected and, and said 21st century. But yeah, that, that little... That little snippet is going viral on social media and everyone is is wondering, what is he talking about? Elect me, I'm in the 20th century. Let me give you some uh, some context as to what Biden was trying to say. And this is coming from the New York Post. Peter Alexander of NBC News asked Biden to address the issue of abortion in Arizona, where the state Supreme Court ruled Tuesday that an 18 64 law banning abortion from the moment of conception remains in effect with only a narrow exception to save the life of a mother. Elect me, Biden replied when asked for his reaction. I'm in the 2020th century, said the president who regularly attracts negative commentary for appearing confused in public or misstating significant facts. A moment later, Biden caught himself and said and added, 21st century, not back then. They weren't even a state. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, Biden. <laughs> 20th century, 21st century, 19th century. <laughs> Whatever, bro. All right, that's the video, everybody. The Duran locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop. Look for limited edition merchandise. The link is in the description box down below. Take care.